Hi folks, this is Tim Garman uh, for SIT on NZDP 101. And uh, I'm going to be just uh, looking at the select and mask feature, which will be particularly useful for weeks 13 to 14 uh, of 101. And Select and Mars has been around for a little while now and Adobe have been refining it and improving it along the way. So it's about time to update this video. So I'm going to start with the Azaria and car image that you may be familiar with. Uh, and I'm going to open up the Melissa Hobbs image, which will open in... Uh, in camera raw so we'll open that as a smart object and what I'm just going to do is uh, drag the tab so that the palette becomes a floating palette and what I can then do is I've got my layers palette open and you can see uh, the layer there and it's indicating it it's a smart object I can drag that layer and drop it onto the background and now I can close um, the Melissa Hobbs image and you can see that in the layer palette I've now got two layers um, and Melissa Hobbs has come in as a smart object. Obviously very large so you need to reduce that down in size. So the first thing we'll do is exactly that. Uh, I can either go to the edit menu and uh, free transform but I see here on the Mac it's command T, uh, control T on a PC uh, that might also be right click T, I'm not sure. Um, but let's do that. Now it's just worth pointing out that if you have actually, if you're zoomed in, you you won't see the edges of the bounding box uh, for when you go into uh, free transform. So you may want to zoom out uh, so you can see that because we're going to need to get to the corner to drag it in so that we can re reduce it in size. And just a, uh, a reminder that on the latest versions of Photoshop, uh, by default, you don't need to hold the shift key down when you resize. It uh, remains in proportion just by dragging the corners. But if you happen to be on an older version of Photoshop, you don't want to be stretching or squashing this image. So you can hold the shift key down and that will constrain the proportions as you drag that corner in. If you're on a newer version of uh, Photoshop and you happen to hold the shift key down as well, that's when you can end up uh, squashing or stretching your image. So remember, current versions of Photoshop, uh, it's by default without the shift key and uh, older versions uh, hold the shift key down when you resize. So as well as resizing, we need to flip it over. So I'm gonna go back up to transform down to flip horizontal and just think about positioning this uh, as the study guide suggests I believe and you notice that the shoulder is cropped there so we want to just enlarge it so that we don't see a cropped shoulder um, on the image. Uh, so I can double click and that's uh, positioned and resized. And you'll notice if I, if I go to the mover tool, I can still move that around. Uh, so there's still an uh, image available outside of the image area if I want to reposition. So let's increase that in size. Now, what I'm going to do is um, just point out how to get into Select and Mask. Uh, now, we can go into the Select menu. And we've got select and mask option available there. Also, if I happen to be on a selection tool, um, it uh, becomes available in the options strip at the top. But it's also worth mentioning that uh, if we had a mask, um, we don't actually have a mask at the moment, but if we did have a, a mask, we can control click the mask and get a, an option to go into select and mask there. I'm going to just click at the top. So now we're in the Select and Mask window, and this is a new window within Photoshop. And we're looking at um, an option strip across the top, 
Uh, we've obviously still got the main menu above and tools on the left and the properties panel on the right with some tabs. Now, at the moment, we're only seeing the bottom of layer of the two layers that uh, we had in Photoshop. And that's simply because we've got the transparency set to 100%. As we reduce that down, we see Melissa Hobbs comes into view. Now that's not changing the image at all. It's just changing the way we view it. And above this slider, we've got a view mode. Now, I want to do a couple of things before we really get into looking at that. But uh, these are all different ways of viewing uh, the work that we're doing. So let's do the first thing. Uh, let's make sure that we've got the preset set to default. So there's no previous settings remembered in here. So we're going to start with a completely new, um, at a new starting place. And in the option strip, I'm going to select the select subject button. So that's identified um, the subject and I can prove that because now we can see when we slide the slider we're only affecting the area that's masked out. So it's created a mask around uh, Melissa Hobbs um, down at the edge of her hair and that's going to be the edge that we want to refine and improve upon if we can. But we can change the way we view that. So now that we've got uh, a mask, let's have a look at these view modes. So the first one's called onion skin, and that's as if we're looking at it through a, sh uh, a sheet of tracing paper, and we can change the uh, transparency of that tracing paper. Uh, the next view is marching ants, which just simply shows us the area we have selected. Or we've got an overlay, which gives us a red overlay uh, and actually we can change the color if red's not appropriate just by clicking here but um, we can also change the opacity of that overlay or we've got a black overlay and that might particularly be particularly helpful because it's quite a high contrast and we can see what's going on down the edge of her, her hair uh, uh, but again we can uh, change the opacity same with white uh, and again, the slider works with white. We've got black. Now that uh, shows us something slightly different because that's just showing us the mask. So there's no slider here. And that can be useful because we can then identify exactly what is masked and uh, um, how that mask is looking. And lastly, we've got uh, just a simple overlay uh, or a simple view showing the, the layers. So I'm going to have that selected at, let's leave it on onion skin for the moment. So over on the left, at the top we've got a quick selection tool. So let's just zoom into this, this image. And uh, with that tool selected, we've got some controls over brush size. And as we use this, we'll see that although it's not doing a great job um, because it's bringing back all of this um, wall area, um, but it is trying to find the edge of that hair. Now, um, you'll notice if I can put this on the darker area, we've got a little plus in the, um, in the cursor and we've got uh, plus and minus options here. So we can add to and sub subtract from our mask, but we can also do that by using the Option key on a Mac, uh, Alt key on a PC, and that would be quicker. And you see that it's toggling uh, through that as I do that. Um, so I could go back and paint that out again. I'm holding down the Option Alt key at the moment. And there is a benefit in, in doing this because as you do this, Photoshop begins to understand what it is exactly that you're trying to um, Select, and let's just repaint that back in. There is some difficulty with this um, image because if I put the transparency down to zero, you'll see that there's not a lot of uh, contrast between the color of uh, Melissa's hair and the wall behind. So that's not an easy, uh, an easy area to isolate. 
but that's one tool that you can use depending on the image that, that you're working on. The next one down is the Refine Edge Brush Tool, and I'll come back to that. Um, but let's have a look at the Brush Tool. Again, we've got options and a uh, familiar uh, brush size and hardness control. Uh, let's just take that down the size of the brush a bit, perhaps a bit more. Uh, hardness I'm going to leave just there for the moment. And we might just look at a different view. So let's have a look at the, the actual mask. And when we look at that, we see, first of all, that we've got a bit of a white edge down where the end of uh, the Melissa image uh, ends. So we can paint that out. And now obviously that's the wrong way around. It's painting white onto the black. So I'm going to undo that and hold down the option key, which uh, you'll see the cursor plus and minus, it changes to a minus in the, in the uh, cursor. And uh, so I've got the option or the alt key held down and I can just paint over that. And I'm now painting black, but obviously I don't want to paint black inside the mask. So I'll undo that. Um, let's just check around and see if there's anything else. Let's zoom out a bit. Um, that's okay. So the thing about the mask is that where it's grey, it's going to be partly transparent. So it may be that uh, we're going to want to not paint black, but paint white and just tidy up some of that, that edge. Particularly where the edge of the hair is, it might be helpful just to fade that mask in. So we can do that just using the brush tool. The navigation using the um, spacebar gives us a hand. Now we can look at how that's looking on a different um, view. No line down here now. Still need to improve on this hairline. Okay, one last thing I'll just do before I move on to another tool is just sort out that corner piece. Um, just with the uh, brush tool, uh, we can just, maybe that's a bit too much. And in fact, let's take the hardness down, or in fact, increase the hardness, I should say, just so that we've got a better edge there. Okay, so let's have a look at the object selection tool. And in order to um, show you how this works, I'm going to close down Select a Mask and just um, switch off the top layer and choose the background layer and then go back into Select a Mask. Uh, we'll reduce transparency so we can see what's going on. Now, if we choose the Object Selection tool, We've got some different ways we can work with the selection. We can add to a selection and subtract or intersect with the selection. We've got what is effectively an automatic object finder, which uh, we want to have ticked if we want to use it. Um, and we've got a way of refreshing our selection. We've got a way of displaying our selection. And we've got some uh, further controls over the selection that we make. Uh, additionally, we've got, or we start by default with a rectangle or rectangular marquee tool. Uh, we've got the option to work freehand with a lasso tool as well. Uh, and then we've got sample all layers and the option to, to have a hard edge or a softer edge. So, first of all, you'll notice that with the object selection tool selected, it identifies shapes straight away. Um, and it will even, I think, identify some of those shapes as well. But we can, um, if we want to uh, select some of these rocks, for instance, it doesn't automatically identify them, but if we put a, uh, a rectangle around there and then uh, reduce the transparency, we notice straight away that that area has been uh, isolated. And of course, there's a bit there that if we were trying to um, mask the rocks, 
we probably want to do a bit more work on it just to remove some of this. But that's uh, an instant way of um, creating a selection. Uh, so we can do the same with uh, the area. It's already identifying as a, um, a very obvious shape with contrast around it. Uh, so now we see we've got that selected. And we can obviously go in and refine that further. So just demonstrating some more of these, these options up in the option strip, uh, that's a way of showing areas that are um, obvious um, objects that can be selected. Um, and that's really the object selection tool. So we've, we've got um, a lasso tool and a polygonal lasso tool for other selections and a hand tool for moving around, navigating the screen, and a magnifying glass for zooming in and out. If, let's go back to uh, having both layers selected to, to show this um, in more detail. So let's have a, another look at the mask on the view, on the view mode. We'll uh, just blow that up or zoom in. And now have a look at the Refine Edge tool. And if we select that tool, we've got the uh, similar options in the option strip for brush size, but we can just paint down the edge and allow Photoshop and select a mask to find the edge that we're trying to isolate. And you see now there's a bit more hair detail um, located. Uh, it does need refining further, and so what we might do is select the brush tool and just go down that edge and you see where there are some very pale greys. That's some transparency coming in which we don't want to see. So I've got the brush set at not maximum hardness, so there's a bit of a soft edge to this, this brush at the moment. So I can come down here and just paint some of that out. might want to just increase increase that soft edge and just tidy up that mask and we can have a look at the onion skin and see how that's looking and there's no reason why we can't paint on the onion skin as well so we might want to take some of that out I'm now holding the option or the alt key down Okay, let's have a look at some of these other options we have on the right. Notice we've got the Remember Settings button checked, so uh, we can come back in to select a mask to these settings that we've uh, already created. We've got an Object Aware and a Color Aware um, uh, choice. So Object Aware tends to be better, in fact, if we mouse over them, it'll tell you what they're best for. Um, so uh, Color Aware, best for uh, objects that have got clear and defined uh, contrast and on this we haven't because the wall is similar in color to the hair so I've left it on the object aware setting. So we'll close refine mode. Look at edge detection. Well this may not make a lot of difference but we can just refine the radius of uh, where we are drawing that line. You'll notice we've got some uh, strange sort of artifacts appearing as we increase that so um, perhaps not the best thing to do but it does highlight the fact that we can we need to just repair some of that uh, and smart radius sometimes gives us a, a, a better result as well but it is highlighting areas that we might need to just retouch a bit further so probably best to leave that switched off. Global refinements um, gives us some control over the edge as well. Um, and we can smooth it, we can feather it, we can, uh, feathering it will, will make it a softer edge. Uh, we can increase the contrast 
Uh, in fact, let's just uh, see what, what these do. I don't think smoothing will do very much. It does, as we, we move it further up, you can see that there's a slightly softer edge to that, uh, that hair. Feathering it will make it softer still. Contrast can be helpful to just uh, identify um, that edge as well. And shift edge, well, if we've got that mask ending there, we can have that edge just jumping inwards, um, and we can perhaps demonstrate that. And a little bit of shift edge actually helps. But if we go the other way, it's going to make some of the wall appear. So we'll just set that round about there. And we can invert that uh, selection as well. So lastly, we've got output settings. Decontaminate colors, that can help uh, as well and uh, can help to eliminate fringing around the edges. Uh, and it will just help to expand some of the color to remove uh, the fringing. Uh, and we can also uh, control how we output this mask. So uh, the default is new layer with the layer mask. So that will give us a copy uh, when we, we come back into Photoshop, a copy or a duplicate layer. But we can also uh, create a new layer by itself or even a new document uh, and put, put the editing that we've done into a completely new document or a new docu document with a layer mask. So that's most of what I wanted to demonstrate in Select and Mask. Uh, it is worth saying that um, if we look at um, the background wall, uh, as I've mentioned, there's very little uh, contrast between the colour of the wall and her hair. So uh, in some respects, this is not a good um, example to be demonstrating Select and Mask on. Having said that, of course, some of the images we want to work on don't offer us perfect um, contrast between um, what we're trying to select and its background. So we have to develop lots of different strategies for uh, the best ways to work on our images. Uh, I'm just going to come out of Select and Mask now. Um, and just to show you an example, if I open up the, um, the image for Assignment E, um, which you're going to have to cut out. And that looks like a dreadful thing to try and cut out around that hair, but there is quite good contrast. She's on a white background. Now, uh, it, she needs to be placed into a beach scene and you'll, you'll have the beach background to download and you'll have this image to download from Blackboard. And you'll be putting her into uh, the beach background. Make sure you, you um, put the whole of this image into the beach first and then mask her hair out. So that's the, the non-destructive approach to doing that. So we're going to have the whole of this image right to the edges in the beach background and then mask around her hair. And you'll find that because there's good contrast, although you may not be able to get every single fine hair you're at the end of it, the hair, uh, you'll be able to get quite a lot of it. Um, so have a go at that and I think you'll find it offers better opportunities to create a mask than perhaps the uh, Melissa Hobbs image. Okay, let's uh, just do one last thing and just reposition this background so that we can see more of what is going on behind Kate. And in order to do that uh, and move that background, we need to unlock it. So we're going to click the icon, the, the padlock icon in the layer panel and uh, the layer now becomes just an ordinary layer rather than a background layer and we can give it a name if we want to. Uh, and let's go to the mover tool and I'm going to hold down the shift key just to keep the background horizontal as I move it and decide how much I want to see. Probably all of that is good. So that's repositioned. It does mean that we lose this bit of sky in the top left corner. So let's create a new layer and let's name it to keep some good habits going. We'll call it corner. Uh, it's just going to be the second from the bottom 
and we're going to um, just clone a bit of sky into that corner. So we're doing it on a new layer just to be non-destructive. Uh, we'll choose the clone stamp tool, make sure we've got current and below selected from the sample menu in the option strip and uh, option click a bit of blue sky and just paint it in there. And that should be done.